The story of Jagged Edge on Urban TV On Demand. Jagged Edge rose to the top with hit after hit through the late 1990s and early 2000s. From the radio, to nightclubs, to wedding receptions, Jagged Edge was on demand. The four members, Brian and Brandon Casey, Kyle Norman, and Richard Wingo created a look and sound that shocked the whole R&B industry. But after the four stars were born, Jagged Edge's cocky attitude while being on top in the music industry became the downfall of their success. Now the twins, Brian Casey and Brandon Casey, was born and raised in Hartford, Connecticut. Their parents' names are Linda and Wayne Casey. Although Brian and his brother became famous singers, their first passion was actually basketball. They were just hilarious as toddlers. They would put on their Superman cape, which was a towel, and they would go down the stairs head first. But it was said that the twins got their musical interest at an early age from their mother, who was a jazz singer known as Linda Ransom. In 1987, Brian and Brandon at the age of 13 moved to Decatur, Georgia with their parents after their father took a job in Atlanta. They were a joy to be around. I love them, they love me. Most fathers want boys, want sons, and so if you can get two of those in one world, you're in good shape. And during that time, the twins met who would be the third member of the group, Kyle Norman, who was the 15-year-old choir director at a church nearby. Kyle then convinced the twins to join the church choir. As time passed by and becoming good friends, Kyle then introduced the twins to another friend named Al. Even though we was in church singing every Sunday, we would still sneak and listen to certain things that we weren't supposed to, whether it was Guy, Keith Sweat. So the influences were just a wide array of music. In which they would start an R&B group called Twin AK. But after a couple of years, Kyle's best friend, Al, dropped out the group. But as time flew by, Courtney Sill, who was the group's manager at the time, got an audition from Richard Wingo, who was a smooth Casanova from College Park, Georgia, who would become the fourth member of the R&B group. It was then when Brian, Brandon, Kyle, and Richard would finally form a superstar R&B group, which would now be called Jagged Edge. Jagged Edge then got in the studio and put together a dope demo tape. And because one of the members knew Candy from Escape, they were able to get their demo to her and she was able to pass it on to Jermaine Dupri. From there, Candy from Escape also became their new manager. I heard the music, I thought they were dope. They didn't sound like anybody else. The next day, I called Wingo back up. I said, hey, you still got that group that you had played me? I was like, yeah, I want to manage y'all. After setting up the meeting with Jermaine Dupri, Jagged Edge signed a record deal with the So So Deaf producer and owner JD in 1996. This would be the start of their successful music career and the start of a romantic relationship between Candy and Brandon. We were in a serious relationship, living together for the first time ever having that experience. Probably one of the most generous people you're ever gonna meet. Like if she got it, you really literally do got it. She'll make you feel like that, you know? Candy and Brandon's relationship created problems later on during the rise of their success and did not last very long. In the meantime, the group was getting closer and closer with JD. And at that time, they released the album, A Jagged Era, in which the smooth R&B ballad, I Gotta Be, co-written by Brandon and Brian, was released in 1997 and landed at number 11 on the R&B charts. Because of the success of the single and album, Jagged Edge took the music on tour. And this was the beginning of their successful career. Ready or not, Jagged Edge was on their way. By the summer of 1998, I Gotta Be put Jagged Edge right where they're supposed to be, on the map. 
which helped their new release album, A Jagged Era, Go Go. And around that time, Jagged Edge was getting a taste of the celebrity life, the high life, and acting a little bit too cocky. We started feeling like we made it a little bit. I can't tell you how many people we probably pissed off. Jagged Edge end up getting a name for themselves in the music industry, getting attitudes, calling the shots, you name it. Even causing some conflicts within the record company in which Jermaine Dupri end up sending the group to anger management. They went to anger management classes for eight weeks. Later on, Jagged Edge head back to the studio to work on their second album. They end up cooking up another ballad, He Can't Love You, written by the twins. He Can't Love You hit the charts at number three on the R&B charts. And shortly after that, Jagged Edge followed up with another R&B ballad which was a smash hit, which was played all over the airwaves. Let's Get Married. Let's Get Married climbed all the way to number one on the R&B charts. By the early 2000s, the album J.E. Heartbreak went platinum. The album's success showcased Jagged Edge in a different way. They stood out from any other R&B group at that time. At that time of their successful album, J.E. Heartbreak, which went platinum, Jagged Edge end up creating their own look and style. Their style catered to the whole so-so death image. We were finally hitting the spot that I wanted the guys to be at. They was actually getting recognized as one of those R&B groups that you have to really pay attention to. From that point, Jagged Edge was fully recognized by the public, and that's when they dropped the remix to Let's Get Married, which smashed the whole music industry in the early 2000s. Through all their success with their album, another single hit the charts. It was called Promise, written by Brandon, which revealed the personal feelings he had for a girlfriend. The single Promise drove all the way to the top at number one on the R&B charts. They don't know the things we share unless they hear me. And that song was just like, don't listen to all that because I promise what I'm saying is real. When I heard Promise, I cried. I knew that that song was about us. Now, Jagged Edge finally has two number one hits, Let's Get Married and Promise. And by the summer, the album J.E. Heartbreak went double platinum. Their success continued with another smash single, Where the Party At, which was played in every club on every R&B radio station all across the country. Where the Party At climbed the charts as well. It drove all the way up to number one on the R&B charts, putting Jagged Edge at three number one singles to smash the R&B charts. This gave Jagged Edge another platinum album. Jagged Edge made it to the top and was living a successful R&B lifestyle. But their successful lifestyle was gonna soon change. Because JD cut ties with Columbia Records, Jagged Edge had to decide whether to stay with Columbia Records or roll with Jermaine Dupri. But they end up staying with Columbia Records because they gave them an offer that they could not refuse. They had a check on the table for us right there. And by that time, we've been spending some money. We need some money. We love JD, we would love to go. But it was like, let's get this money, man. And it was a hard time for us because that was our mentor, that was you know, that's our father in this game. When he told us that he was leaving, my first thing was like, okay, where well, we going to? That would be the end of Jagged Edge and So So Deaf producer Jermaine Dupree. Now that Jagged Edge is signed directly to Columbia Records, they begin to craft up another album. They started their own production company and started to work on their fourth album. Their fourth album was called Hard. Spending all day in the studios working on their albums, Jagged Edge cooked up another dope single called Walked Out of Heaven. Released in 2003, 
Walked Out of Heaven by Jagged Edge climbed all the way up to number two on the R&B charts. I'm rolling down a lonely highway. Which made the Hard album go gold. With the success of the Hard album, Jagged Edge showed the record company they could do it on their own. But that success was short lived. Later on, Jagged Edge returns back to the studio to work on their fifth album. But little did they know, the record company had another idea for the fifth album. Donnie Einer, who presented us with the reggaeton record that he really wanted Jagged Edge to do. The guys was like, we're not singing somebody else's record, we write our own record. Because Columbia Records had other ideas, Jagged Edge pretty much got pissed off with the execs of the record label. And as things heated up, Jagged Edge was dropped from Columbia Records. So, I felt a little disrespected. And it was kind of a push and pull for some months. We would go on meetings and they didn't like how vocal we were at times. After having some downtime from being dropped from Columbia Records, Jagged Edge was free and independent and luckily was able to get back with JD who recently signed a record deal for another label. Jermaine Dupri was able to get Jagged Edge a new deal and it was back in the studio they went. Within the year, Jagged Edge released their sixth album, which was called Baby Making Project. But this time around, the album went nowhere. The group created a lot of frustrations within the record label. Just us again, you know what I'm saying? Still trying to want to be a Zach, still trying to want to do our own thing. We might have rubbed some of the staff the wrong way again. No singles, no gold albums. Jagged Edge was on a downhill slope. And with their frustration between the group, the album sales, and the record label, Jagged Edge success would start to be a problem. They wasn't supporting the record. We wasn't doing nothing to support the record on their behalf. And everything just dissolved after that. By 2014, their separation grew even wider. Wingo decided to start a new group with Q from 112 and RL from Next. And this was around the time that the twins hooked back up with So So Deaf Jermaine Dupri, in which they just agreed to drop a new Jagged Edge album. Not only was your timing bad, okay, but we one of the last few groups even still standing, bro. Like, you would rather do that? I just want to work. That's all with me. That's all it's about for me. But after hearing the good news about working with JD again, Wingo decided to put his project aside and focus on Jagged Edge. So it was back in the studio with JD and the group end up doing another album, J.E. Heartbreak 2. But right after the album release, Kyle Norman of Jagged Edge got arrested for aggravated assault for choking his fiance with her engagement ring. Out of the blue, he just starts going off about his father saying that I wasn't supportive and he just flipped. He said it was like an outer body experience. Like he doesn't remember a lot of it. It was said that he got 15 years on probation. And since that time, it was said that he'd been cited for probation violations. It was said that he skipped a lot of his drug evaluations as well as his anger management classes. I think that's just substance abuse that we swept up under the rug for so long without getting it addressed. We lost sponsorships. We lost total support of the project. It's something that makes me sick to my stomach, you know? So while Kyle is spending his time in jail, the rest of the three members of the Jagged Edge group is back in the studio working on their ninth album and hopefully to release it to the fans soon. My name is Antoine and you're watching Urban TV On Demand. Today, I wouldn't want to be be on stage with no other guys, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I literally, agree. we've grown. Even though he dabbled a little. Yeah, I don't dabble. Y'all don't dabble. Dabble, you know, dabble here and there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> dabble here. It, it ain't. <laughs> right, it ain't. <laughs>